Thanks, Scott. And yes, it's great to have you on our set once again. And here we are. It's the Grand Prix final. And this is a place you've been to five times in your career. But take us inside the mind of these competitors right now, because you can't exhale just yet, right? You've competed in two events. You've been keeping your eye on the other competitors. And now here you are. What went through your heads whenever you were at the Grand Prix final? Well, for us, the Grand Prix finals was always a huge event. And it was uh, massive, particularly in the fall. But it's really like a mini world's. But having said that, it isn't Worlds. So we always try to use it uh, to get our stuff out there, to get the calls back, and really as motivation. We used uh, Grand Prix Finals a lot of time as what we call bulletin board material. We'd use that kind of motivation of being second or or not having our greatest skates to really push us forward into march into the World Championships. And is that how you approached it too? And you, you were competing against, I mean, it's the top six, so the best of the best. Well, in the scope of the season, you really plan to peak twice once at the World Championships and once at Grand Prix Final. So you're right, you absolutely cannot excel, and I think you can't discount anyone. I mean, don't underestimate who will rise to the occasion at a Grand Prix Final. So take us to maybe a Grand Prix Final where you had your most favorite skate. What year would that be, and what was that skate? It's going to be Japan, I think. For me, it's Japan, yeah. uh, 2009, um, leading into the Olympic Games. But, you know, more than that, it was... Everything that could have gone wrong in our travel day went wrong. We were delayed a day. We didn't arrive until the night before the original dance. We didn't have skates once we got there, no luggage. So (laughs) that was intimidating, but it really set us up. I remember thinking, if we can get through this, we can get through anything. Yeah, we'd we'd been, uh, when we skated our short dance, how long had we been in Japan? Like 20 hours or something? Oh, yeah, I'm sure we we were. we didn't quite have all of our luggage, and it was (laughs) a little bit of a scramble, but then... Yeah, it just made us so much stronger for the Olympics. And it's, we kind of had a, everything happen for a reason attitude, and we really thought that this gave us strength that season for sure. And it was such an ambitious program that by this point in the season, we were finally just starting to get a handle on it. And it was at nationals of this season when we really felt like, okay, yeah. this program is ours. Well, like true performers, you can't even tell that you had just arrived a few hours <laughs> earlier and didn't have any luggage. And, of course, you went on to win gold at the 2010 Olympics. Now, when it comes to the Grand Prix final, four-time silver medalist and a lot of people seem to think that the Grand Prix final will dictate who goes on to win Olympics who goes on to win worlds and you defied that but how did you wrap your heads around okay I got silver at Grand Prix now I'm going to bounce back and win everything else I think yeah as I said like it's really we use it as motivation but I think that's the the mindset of an athlete you're always looking forward and uh, even if we had uh, won we would have been just thinking about the world championships right away and in some ways, you know, being second all those times was kind of a luxury because it really made us hungry and it really made us want to uh, beat the team that ended up winning Grand Prix Finals, Marilyn Charlie, most of the time. <laughs> um, but uh, it really made us want to get that world title. And what a great battle that was. Guys, once again, thank you so much for taking the time here on CBC Sports. Thanks for having us.